Hi there, this is Chef Martin in the Thermoworks Demo Kitchen. I'm here today with Jeff Phillips from smokingmeat.com. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to cook some amazing tri-tip. Jeff, take it away. Here's our tri-tips, what do you like to do? All right, we've got some good looking tri-tips here, as Martin said. And um, so I'm gonna hold one of these up so you can see it. You can see all this fat that's running between the, between the grains here. And that's really what you wanna see when you're picking out a tri-tip. Uh, it's gonna, when that cooks, some of that fat's gonna start rendering a little bit and that's just gonna really make it taste great. We're not gonna do a lot to these, we're gonna keep it really simple. Uh, I'm gonna add some salt uh, to it to dry brine these. And uh, that salt is gonna start pulling out some of those juices. And uh, once I start seeing that juice come to the surface, I'm gonna add some pepper and uh, we're gonna keep it that simple. Now one thing I wanna show you before we get the seasoning on here is that uh, the grains on this tri-tip tend to change directions. On this side, the grain is running this way, if you can see that. And then once you get about halfway here, the grain starts running this direction. So when we get ready to slice this up when we're finished, uh, that will affect how we slice it. Okay, Jeff, so you say we're gonna do just a simple salt and pepper on this, so how much salt do you like to use? Uh, typically, typically you wanna use a half teaspoon per pound of meat. I, I kinda of know what a teaspoon looks like and I've done this so much, so you'll be able to see you know, the pattern of how I put this on, on here. Great. So uh, I'll just go ahead and do that. And so that right there is about a teaspoon and I'm gonna put about that much on each, uh, each of the tri-tips. So do you, is that enough for both sides or is that for one side? I don't typically salt both sides, you can. Okay. Uh, if you get a really thick steak or something, you're, you know, you can definitely <clears throat> uh, salt both sides, but um, I don't typically do that on a tri-tip. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna try to get a, a pretty even amount and I'm, I'm really trying to get the top of this because what's gonna happen is this salt is gonna start uh, pulling the juices to the, to the top and um, it'll actually dissolve the salt. This is one of the reasons we use coarse kosher salt is that it's kind of, it's, it's, it's flaked and it dissolves easier than any other type of salt, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm just gonna, and that's, that may look like a lot of salt, but that is perfect right there. Nice. nice. And uh, let's go ahead and do the other one real quick. And just about the same amount. And you don't have to be real careful with this. Um, just try to get salt over all the surface. And that that's really good right there. Okay. And. So about how long are you gonna let these sit? Uh, how, how long does it usually take for the moisture to come to the surface before you apply the pepper? Usually 15, 20 minutes, you're gonna start seeing those surfaces come. Uh, you can see the water start, the moisture from the meat start coming to the surface. Okay, Jeff, it's been about 15, 20 minutes. We've had some pre-barbecue snacks while we've waited for this to happen. Um, show us what happens next. All right, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but this, uh, and I'm gonna hold this board up a little bit so you can get a better view. This, uh, we put this salt, a half, you know, a one teaspoon of uh, salt, kosher, coarse kosher salt on each one of these tri-tips. And it is actually, it has brought that, that ju meat juice, that's what I call it, to the surface. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's created a really nice binder for the pepper that we're gonna add to this. And also another reason for that, that's not just, you know, used as a binder. Um, that juice that's coming to the surface is actually melting that salt. And, uh, and then, um, that will be absorbed back into the meat. So my, you know, my, by putting the pepper on here now, uh, some of the oils from that pepper will also be mixing with that, with that moisture. And uh, so we're basically creating kind of a brine on the surface with the melted salt and, and the pepper and all absolutely, things like that. Absolutely. So that's going to solidify into our bark, basically. Yes, it, it really will. Fantastic. And uh, I'm going to add about the same amount of pepper that I added, you know, as salt. I'm going to add about a teaspoon on each, uh, on each. And that may okay. sound like a lot, but this is a, this is a, you know, a, a nice thick, big piece of meat, and it can definitely handle it. Beef can definitely hold its own. Yeah, pepper and beef so good together, anyways. So. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So go for it. I'm just going to do what I did before. Get about a, a good heaping teaspoon up there. 
And, uh, and are you also peppering just the one side? I'm just peppering the one side. Okay. That's really, you know, tri-tip is one of those things, especially the ones we picked out here, and they've got a lot of fat in them. They've got a lot of flavor. Um, so, we, you know, they, we're not trying to override the, the beef flavor. We're just trying to... Uh, accentuate it. Accentuate it, absolutely. So that's that one. I'm going to do the same thing to the nice. other one. So it's, yeah, it's a nice, nice coating of pepper there. Not too thick, not too thin. And you definitely don't want to get too much, but, um, and you know, you, you could also, uh, if you have some other type of rub you like, you could do that too. Um, I often choose to keep it simple, but you could add some garlic powder, onion powder, if you want, if you was feeling like it that day. Okay. Um, so we've got the pepper on there now. And um, uh, as I said before, we like to put these in the fridge for at least a couple of hours. Overnight is great. And uh, I don't generally cover them or anything. I just set them right in the fridge just like they are. Uh, but first, I want to transfer these into a pan. Okay. We'll get this over this. And I've just got a pan here, and I've placed a uh, piece of parchment paper in it. Uh, another thing I will often do if I have a... Um, a, uh, a rack that fits down into the pan. Sometimes it's nice to put the meat on top of a rack. We have one of those. You have one, one of those? Yep. Uh-huh. There we go. Okay, that's, so that, that way, we, that's meat, perfect. The meat juices can kind of drain away from yes, it that way, huh? Yes, absolutely. And uh, um, I kind of like, I kind of like that. I'm just transferring these right to this pan. And it's really as simple as that. And uh, we're going to place these in the fridge and uh, let them kind of do their thing, kind of get, you know, get the pepper and the salt and the meat, get to know each other for about two hours. And uh, we'll throw them in the smoker after that. All right. See you in a couple hours. All right, Jeff, we've had the tri-tips in the fridge for some time now. Uh, how are they looking? What's up next? The tri-tips are looking really good. We just pulled them out and uh, we're getting ready to throw them in the smoker here. Um, I did want to talk about kind of how we're going to do this. I'm going to put them on the smoker grate. We're going to leave them. It may take an hour and a half, two hours for them to get up to about 105, 110 is how warm I need to, I like to take them. Now, in order to check that temperature, we're going to be using the brand new Smoke X from Thermalworks. And this is the uh, X4 version. It's got the four probes. And uh, of course, we're going to be using two of those. And we're using uh, the air probe to monitor the temperature of the, of the grate right where the meat is going to be sitting. So we'll know for sure what we're looking at. And uh, so we're gonna set them on the, on the grate, cook them, and when we're done, we're gonna steer those things on, this, uh, on the side griddle here and uh, get a good sear on both sides. And uh, we'll kind of go from there. All right, well, let's do it. Now he's putting the probes in these and we're wanting the tip of that probe to be right in the center of the thickest part. And uh, that's gonna tell us uh, when our meat reaches 105, 110 degrees. And then of course, uh, ultimately we're gonna sear these and get them up to about 128 to 130. And um, uh, it's very important to use a probe on these. Um, and, and so, you know, to make sure that they're safe for your friends and family to eat. There's, you know, I know a lot of people do the, the touch test and that sort of thing, but I, I don't leave anything to chance when, I, when I'm cooking. And of course, now we're gonna go in and uh, kind of keep an eye on this receiver uh, so we can know what our temperatures are out here. And uh, we wanna make sure we pull those off at exactly the right time to make sure they're perfectly done and juicy and tender like we want them. All right, Jeff. Our uh, smoke X says 105 here. Shall we uh, take a look? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so. So we're gonna do some spot checking here to uh, make sure we're all good all across. Now it's uh, got 100 degrees right there, a little bit lower. We might wanna give that just another minute. This one. We like to get them around 105. Uh, at this point in the game, that uh, and one's we're gonna actually pretty good. Take them out, let them rest a little bit while we get the uh, griddle ready to sear these. This one's a little bit thicker and it is still a little bit cooler, but we could take that guy off and start resting him. How's that All sound? All right, let's do it. 
Here. Yeah. Oh, you got it. All right. I'm going to do it with my hands. All right. All right. Okay. I'm just going to place these in a pan, and uh, we'll go ahead and shut this down. Now, we're going to let this um, tri-tip sit here in the pan, cover with foil for a few minutes. And uh, ultimately, we're going to get this uh, griddle on the side here, searing hot, screaming hot, and um, get some, some good browning on, the, on both sides of that, on all sides of that tri-tip. All right, Jeff, we cooked that second tri-tip until it came up mm -hmm. to temp, took mm -hmm. it off. Uh, we've got it here wrapped with the other one. Uh, I've got a thermopen for our final sear check. And uh, what are we at there? We're about 600 right now. Okay, 500 something, 600 degrees. That's hotter than you generally need. Anything above 425 though you need for a sear. So shoot for 425 to something higher. This will cool off pretty quick when we put some meat on there. So shall we? Sure. Here, you take the tongs. I'll hold the foil. If I do them both at one time. Yeah, go for it. Okay. So are you going for, what? what's your final internal temperature that you're looking for here? I'm looking for about, anywhere between 125 and 130. I'm pretty happy. Okay. I don't, I definitely don't want to go over that because then you're getting outside of that medium rare. And also, um, these are gonna, these are gonna continue to cook um, after we take them off, that carryover cooking. You have to really pay attention to that as well. Okay. Oh, that's, that's going to be really pretty. Looking good. Some nice red color there from the smoke. That's lovely. Jeff, what is it that you like to do when the tri-tips cook? What's your favorite way to, to, to eat it? Do you just like to slice it and eat it? Do you make tacos out of it, put on a sandwich? What, what's your, what's your tri-tip mode? You know, what I generally do is I'm gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slice it against the grain, you know, maybe eighth inch, quarter inch, just depending on what you like. And, you know, we've actually placed those slices on top of salads. Mm. Uh, you can do, they make great fajitas. We've done some really, really great fajitas with using, uh, using sliced tri-tip. So, you know, the, you can kind of, the sky's the limit. That sounds, that sounds great. I think probably today we're just gonna eat this, right? Just like pick it up and eat it, right? Absolutely. I'm okay with that. What do you, th what do you think? Um, you know, I think let's go ahead and flip it. And, uh, you know, we can see how, see, we can see how it goes from there. That's got some really nice sear on it. This yeah. is really pretty. I'm liking the way that's looking. Yeah, we got to, I mean, the, the, the redness from the smoke here, I, I can tell we're gonna have an amazing smoke ring in Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do, once I get to the other side, I'm also gonna um, kinda turn this up on its side and try to get some of those edges. I, oh, I great. do that sometimes well, too. Well, yeah, because the more Maillard browning and the more crispness Absolutely. we can get on that, the, yes. then the better, right? Yes. Yeah, that's something that uh, people could do a lot more with a lot of their steaks, actually. If you get a, like a, a yeah, filet, right. you sear the tops, you sear the bottom, it's really good to roll that on its side. I agree. To do it, because that's where all that, that tasty, meaty flavor is coming from. Absolutely. Well, I, I want to take them off and eat them now, but they're not there yet. <laughs> but let's go ahead and <laughs> see what kind of temps we got here. See what we're looking at. Yeah, we've got, we've got some room to spare here. Um, we're still... Uh, we're still we're still in a good place. So we're at about that's about 118 there. Perfect. So we still got a couple degrees that we can that we can play with All right. for this year. Sometimes if you see that meat sticking up a little bit, you can uh, use your tongs to hold that down and make sure you got a good even sear. Did you put another, like if you had a, a cast iron pan or something you could set on that there, right? That would work great, yes. Just kind of weigh it down the whole yes. time. Of course, you don't want anything too heavy to squish the juice out. Right. But something like that would be nice. Right. See what that's... Oh, that's pretty. We're getting some good color on that. That one's also looking really nice. Okay. And you don't have to, you don't have to spend too much time worried about it, but... I like to get as much brown as I can. Well, and you know, uh, just to reiterate something you talked about earlier, you can see here that grain running down here. Yes. And then right about here, kind of going like this and like that. So we're going to cut this here, right? Yes. And I then go ahead, cut, go ahead slice and slice it cut. like that mm -hmm. and then like that. So there's basically cutting it into two chunks. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. 
those edges. I don't spend as much time on the edges as I do, say, the top and the bottom. Right. But I still like to see some of that browning. Just a little bit of color there just adds a little bit, you know, adds more to it. That is a hot grill. It is very hot. And I want to get that bottom edge there as well. And there's so much fat in these tri-tips running through those, you, you know, that we saw when they were, uh -huh. before we cooked them. Uh, and that's just, that's what, that's why tri-tip is so good. It keeps, the, it, that fat renders, especially during the sear process, and uh, that meat is going to be so juicy. All right. Yeah, I think we're looking pretty good there. I really do. Right, let's see, see what the, see here. what kind of temp we're at. I'm at 119. No, 120. Okay. So that's great for me. I love that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that too. If you are, I'm great with that. All right. There's a. Man, those look so good. Oh, and the smell. Oh, the smell. Wow. So we're going to wrap these and let them sit for... Let, yeah, let's put some foil on okay. them and uh, let them rest for maybe, I don't know. Five minutes? I usually go around 20, but we can... We'll, we'll do it as long as we you can stand have it. More you have more self-control than I do then. It depends we'll, on the day. We'll wrap them and let them set for a while. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jeff. We've waited your prescribed 20 minutes. Yeah. It was hard. <laughs> Can we eat it now? We're ready. All right, let's do it. All right. Get the foil off of this. There we go. I'm just going to actually grab one of these. Man, this looks so good. Oh, look at all that juice. Look at all that juice. And uh, grab my knife here. Now, uh, we was mentioning earlier that this grain direction changes. That is such an important thing to, to talk about when you're looking at tri-tip. Um, we can see Martin here where this grain is definitely running yeah. right here and about right in here somewhere it changes. Yep, I see that right there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just cut this in half because we're going to be cutting each one of these pieces in a different direction. Okay. So we're gonna about right in here look good to you? Looks great to me. Yeah, that's right on that line. All right. It's nice to have a good sharp knife to yeah. move out This is side. beautiful. We've got some, some lovely smoke ring here. We do. And this is a nice medium rare. Uh, maybe even close to rare, which I'm totally down with I'm today. I'm down with that too. So our grain is running this way on this piece. So I'm just going to kind of slide it this way and kind of just give some slices mm, cutting here. Cutting on a nice bias. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. That is, that is good looking. <laughs> yeah. And I do it somewhere between an eighth inch and a quarter. Just and I steal some from you, so. And we don't have to slice all this right now, but Man, that looks so good. It is good. And I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab me a piece there. We did good, Martin. Yeah, we did good. All right. All right. Well, there you have it. Tri-tip, simply seasoned, perfectly smoked with a nice sear on it. Uh, thanks to watching your temperatures and the new Smoke X4, and especially thanks to Jeff Phillips for coming out and talking with us. Thanks so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Come, come back right. and do it again sometime. All right.